I walk into the kitchen to see what was for dinner. I see my dad stressed about how many onions to use and if we had enough tomatoes. Take one onion, no sorry, one and a half and one big tomato. My dad looked over at me like I had just left culinary school without being excused. Rohini, what are you doing? Come here and listen. I'm teaching your sister my famous South Indian chicken curry. I could tell my dad was being serious. When it came to cooking, it meant business. It was finally the day we were making money's South Indian chicken curry. It was passed on from generation to generation with tweaks here and there, but my dad's was the best. We finally made the chicken curry all together. It felt like the beginning of a family tradition. I thought to myself, maybe every weekend we would huddle up in the kitchen and make this chicken curry all together. And this would be the first of many because we made it for the first time ever. Flashback a few years prior, I was a dancer and trained in Indian classical dance called Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam is an ancient Indian classical form of dance that requires a lot of stamina and strength. My dad would take me to every single dance practice every Saturday. It would often become a routine as he grabbed the flip camcorder and recorded every single dance practice for me to practice from. The same old routine, the same drive back from upstate New York to New Jersey as my dad would tell me I did a great job or I could have practiced some more. I'd often laugh as my dad tried to give me advice. Dad, you can't even dance, I would say. Every Saturday was normal up until one point. I felt a heavy weight in my right calf. My dance moves were not right. Something was not right. Flash forward a few months later. I find myself waiting in a hospital waiting room. I had just had a bunch of scans and a biopsy done on my right calf. I was 14 years old, so worried about the geometry test that I had just missed. I was so worried about this geometry test as if the Pythagorean theorem was gonna land me a job in 20 years. I started scrolling through my friend's text which read, let me know how everything goes and I hope everything goes well, bro. I didn't look too deeply into those text messages. Nothing could have prepared me for the next 15 seconds as I proceeded into the doctor's room and sat on a chair. I had no idea what was coming for me. I was told the words, you have cancer, more specifically, Ewing sarcoma, stage one, in your soft tissue right next to your tibia. Immediately, my worries about the geometry test faded and the text that my friend sent me suddenly made sense to me. I wasn't even, I hadn't even gone numb yet. I was quite coordinated and sensitized to the environment I was suddenly thrown in. My mom burst into tears. My dad sat stone cold. I just listened to the doctor and the doctor continued soon after. I would probably have to quit dance, track, and basketball. I couldn't see my dance friends every Saturday anymore. I couldn't attend the next dance recital. The stamina I once needed to hold myself still during dance didn't exist in this moment anymore because I felt weak. Life froze in that moment. The conversation of chemotherapy, radiation, fertility treatment, hair loss started very quickly. On November 4th, 2015, almost all my high school wore blue in honor of my favorite color on my last day of public school as I continued my education via home instruction. My house became flooded with aunts, uncles, and cousins running around. My Indian household still remained jovial. I started chemotherapy, which was followed by months of throwing up, morphine withdrawals, fatigue, weight loss, etc. Now I should note, I really didn't understand strength and what it meant. I was always told the words, you're so strong, but it was just doing what had to be done. I could relate to vulnerability, but strength wasn't definable to me. During dance, I would often lose balance from my spins, and I was so embarrassed from struggling to do the simplest steps I was trained to do for years. So the feeling of vulnerability had begun from my last days of dance. It was like a rain cloud towered over my head every single day, reminding me why I quit Paranatyam and I had never felt so lost. During chemo treatment, my dad started getting high fevers every night. He would sit beside me with the left hand to his forehead, massaging his headache, and our right hand stroking my hand as I had a Mesna bag pushing medicine into my body every hour. He would drive me to radiation for 28 days to New York City while shivering with a 104 fever. The biopsy result had come back. It was cancer, a rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Life, yet again, became still. My dad looked at me with a soft glance and reassured me that everything would be okay with just his eyes. 
what are the chances, chances that two people in the same household would have two unrelated cancers? I saw it for the first time in months, not because I had cancer, but because my dad had cancer. My dad and I went to the hospital together this time and would have chemotherapy together and would poke at each other for rocking the bald look. Rohini, you look amazing bald, he would say. I mean, you too, Dad. Where else would I get it from? I would say laughing. <laughs> my dad and I would drink our bone marrow broth soups together, which my vegetarian mom made, and insisted would raise our white blood cell counts. But you know, I think I started to understand strength and resilience through my dad and I, not with just myself. I started to understand that weakness leads to perseverance. Remember the chicken curry that my dad, sister, and I made in the beginning? That was when my dad and I were both going through chemotherapy together. He was still weak, but his love of cooking and keeping up with family traditions didn't stop him. I don't know what compelled him to teach right then and there, but I'm glad he did, because a month later, he was in the ICU. My dad and I had finished chemotherapy, and he had a supposedly successful stem cell transplant. But around Christmas, he started getting high fevers again. I had left to watch Moana with my friends. My phone buzzed in the middle of the movie. It was my mom and sister. We're taking dad to the ER, his fever is increasing at red. The movie became white noise. I've never felt a Disney movie become so dark. I came home to an empty house with just my grandmother who had no idea what was going on. Rohini, you're back so early, she asked. I didn't know what to say. My dad's health declined and he was transferred to the ICU. He was intubated with tubes running through his mouth and communicated to my sister and mother with a marker and whiteboard. They would ensure that he was in good hands, but he knew that things were not going well. I was still immunocompromised, so my family kept me away for most of the time, but I visited the hospital for, for the first time, unaware of the hospital scene and oblivious to everything going on. My hair had grown two inches from the time I was apart from my dad. I went to the glass and saw my heavily sedated father struggling to open his eyes to see my face. Tears flooded my eyes as I struggled to find words. It was January 2017. My mom and uncle received a call from the hospital. We urge you to come to the hospital immediately. Bring your whole family. A crowd of people had just entered the ICU. I saw my dad in full life support, which would soon become the last time I saw him. Suddenly, red and blue sirens went off. It felt like a movie. Nurses rushed in and performed CPR. I knew I couldn't enter the room, but I ran towards the room screaming, Appa, with words barely coming out. Everything was chaotic. The monitor went blank. He had passed. Everyone froze. Life froze again. Who knows how to handle life at 14, or heck, 50. Throughout my life, I've learned so much from my dad and I. He's not here today, but I continue to celebrate him and his life every single day. Every birthday, I make money South Indian chicken curry and share it with everyone I know. His last birthday, I made his chicken curry for all my college friends, and, I, and my roommate surprised me with a cake for him. They insisted I make a toast in honor of him, something I had never done before. So I stood there and spoke about money. He's the reason why I'm the person I am today. He's the reason why I started loving cooking and keeping up with family traditions. He's the reason why we both handled our journeys so gracefully. In 2020, I submitted an application to Humans of New York, a platform that shares stories all over the world, and I got selected in July to share mine. It had been my dream ever since I was 14 years old to share my story, and it was truly a surreal moment to share my story on such a powerful platform. There's something so powerful about acceptance, to keep pushing forward. There were times where I despised the thought of dancing again and running track, but I realized my past were just stepping stones to bring me to the point in my life today. I could have called it quits with everything I loved, but I still dance, I still ran track, and I sure as hell still make my dad's chicken. I started track a month after my dad passed. I went from not being able to use both of my legs while attached to an IV pole to running a mile every single day. I remember when I ran my first lap, I felt like I couldn't run anymore. I passed out. I knew I was losing myself. But I remember the days my dad would sit during basketball practice, cheering me on with the biggest grin on his face. So I envisioned his big, booming smile every track meet. 
cheering me on, supporting me. Strength comes from struggle, acceptance, and perseverance and continuous effort. Six years after conquering cancer and five years after losing my dad, I understood reality. My story highlighted resilience, but more importantly, how your lowest point can make you the strongest person. The power of strength is acceptance. You have to keep pushing forward, and it's okay to let your guard down. You don't always have to be a superhero. I was a lost girl at 14 who just wanted to dance and make chicken with her father. But after six years, I realized my past refines me rather than defines me. Thank you.